Hi and welcome back to Prep Bytes. So in the previous video, we had went and created this login component uh, so that uh, when we are going to go in and we'll be using this particular app, you'll be able to go in and authenticate yourself and authorize yourself so that you are able to go in and continue on with your session of conversations you would have had within the application. Correct. Okay. So uh, in this video, we're going to be building uh, back a few other uh, uh, additional components like the online users and the online available groups component. So that we can go in and show all the users who are currently online and all the groups that are currently available for you to go in and join. Uh, you can add an additional functionalities to this. Uh, this is just a basic standard template, I would say, for any chat application with a few bunch of features. You can seriously go in and add in a bunch more additional UI components and features to this application. Okay, so before I jump in and I start creating the online groups and the available groups and the online users component, let us just go in and add a bit more punch to our UI, right? So uh, one of the things that you can kind of do with the material design is to add in a bunch of shadows, a box shadows, I would say specifically. So that you can make each of these items to go in and pop, right? So uh, one of the ways I, I usually go in and tend to do this in a much more faster, quicker read rather than going in and seeing, okay, which one works is that I use this particular website called as get CSS scan. So they'll give you a bunch of uh, pre-built CSS uh, styles that you can choose from. Now this is specifically for box shadows and you can see there's a bunch of examples that we have over here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just, it's fairly easy to use as well. You can just go in and click on whichever style you feel like is pretty good and then go to your component and in within the CSS, just go in and add this particular style, right? So, um, I'm going to go in and add this shadow for this lo login component, the entire main container, and that would suffice, I would say for the time being. Okay. And we'll, I'll show you the same example with that or chat UI application as well with the sidebar so that how much you can go in and customize this according to your need. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to take you back into VS code. And the thing I am, I'm for sure is that yes. Okay. So we have this particular component, uh, in the outside, right? Which is our login container. Okay. So, uh, if I go into my login container, so this is my login container, as you can see where the entirety of the login page is going to show up. And, um, I'm just going to go in and take this particular class, which is the login container class in VS code. What you can do is you can open your JS files and CSS side by side. And if you hold control alt and click on any of the classes, it'll just open up or it'll just, you know, uh, go in and span across to the CSS for that particular class kind of makes things pretty convenient, right? If I want to go for login box, control alt and click on it. All right. So this is for the container. I'm just going to add in the box shadow styles that had been copied up. And now if I take you back, you'd be able to see that. Yeah. Now this particular, uh, like we have a small drop shadow on the overall container, right? It makes it pop up and be a bit more and it gives a three dimensional effect altogether. Okay. So, uh, this, there's another, uh, style you can go for, which called called the glass morphic design, which I would say would pretty much give it a really good feel. Okay. But anyways, um, let's go into the sidebar. Okay. So I'll show you the same effect that the shadows can do onto your sidebars. Okay. So I'm going to go in and first and foremost, bring the main container back and let's just throw our login container out for the time being. And now what we'll do here is, uh, let's go for the sidebar. Okay. So we, within our main container, we have our sidebar container. So within the sidebar, uh, container with the sidebar element, uh, within sidebar component, yeah, we have our header. Okay. So this is the idea here. So if I take you back onto the browser, so there you go. So within the sidebar, I have three areas. I have the header, the search box and this, uh, conversations, uh, area, right? So let's just go in and grab a different style. Um, I'm just going to choose some in random. Okay. And I'll just add it to all three of these components. So we'll go into header. Let's just add some shard to this. Um, we can put this in here, save this. Uh, we have the search component. There we go. So we have the search component here. Let's add it to that as well. And then finally the conversations. Okay. We're going to go into conversations and add the shadows there as well. Okay, fine. Now I'll tell you another way you can kind of go in and optimize the way you, uh, you put colors in CSS, even though I should have done this in the initial part, 
but it's say you we can still go in and make some work out of it because we generally we do have to go in and uh, get this functionality of being able to toggle our themes right okay so now if i take you back into the browser and to my app now you can see that the elements that we have the search box the this particular conversation container all of these kind of tend to go in and like pop out okay it's not like it's just stuck on in a two dimensional plane they're popping out right so it's 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 that small difference which a shadow can make like even though the shadow is not that you know i would say uh, overpowering it still gives it a really good feel like you know it makes it so that yeah the web page kind of looks like it's three dimensional and everything seems operational okay so you can go in and keep adding in more components onto this like whatever components we have we can just easily go in and uh, you know uh, uh, like add some shadows uh, change in some colors you can create your own accent colors you need not go in with the same color schema here i'm just keeping in material white so that you know later on if you want to go in and do some changes as and such it'll be fairly easy for us to do so as well okay all right so uh, i'm going to quickly just uh, add in some shadows to the chat area header as well maybe let's see how that would go in and look like okay so i'm going to add it to the chat area header and yeah okay so that that's pretty good now we're going to do it for the other two components as well uh, so we have the messages container uh, to which i would be going in and okay let's just let's just go in and give it some styles here you go okay and we have it okay so this is kind of how uh, you is going to look like it's everything just pops up a bit more uh, it's optional i'm not saying this is mandatory as and such but adding a bit of shadows can always go in and make that particular element to pop out right okay now let's just go in and start building up our online users and our available groups component so uh, this is kind of the design that we're going to be going with so it's going to be fairly simple this component is going to go and replace whichever the other component has been already loaded to the right hand side of our sidebar right so what's our idea over here the sidebar is going to go in and stay fixed in its own place but the component to its right hand side is going to go in and keep getting swapped out okay so um if you want to go in and chat then we'll be able to go in and load the chat area component if uh, you want to go in and create groups you can load the create group component and so much so on so we already created these components all that is left for us to do is to add in the routing which we'll be doing in the next video okay so let's just directly jump in and create this particular component we can go in and reuse the same component and uh, maybe like uh, you know use it for the same purpose of displaying all of our available groups okay so i'm just going to go in and make a basic template as in such the data we'll be going in and fetching it later on and uh, we'll see in how exactly can we go in and render out all of these components okay so for the time being i'm just going to add in a bunch of elements we'll create a component for each user so that in case there are multiple users you know more than 10 50 users who are currently using the application all of them we can go in and render out each information of every other uh you know user as a separate component so it's up to us how we can uh, if you know how exactly we want to go in and do this all right so um without wasting much time let's just directly jump into our vs code we are going to start with going in and creating a new component okay so i need this i'll be needing my main container so within the main container we have our sidebar and instead of the sidebar we will be going in and rendering out something else all right so that's that's our idea here okay <clears throat> so um i'm going to create a new component let's just start with this over here um i'm going to close out my styles for the time being okay and let's just create a new file we'll call it as uh online okay or just call it as users um and groups okay we'll call it users and groups dot js okay i'll name this as users underscore groups there you go and we're going to start with a boilerplate code there we go and i'm going to give it a class over here uh, another main reason i'm going with this is because we can kind of reutilize this right we can reutilize the same uh, component later on to go in and display all the available uh, groups so all we'll have to go in and do is just make it so that we are passing which particular uh, what is the title that should be displayed out within the con container okay so for the time being i'm just going to say uh, i'll say um you know list container because this is just going to be a list all right uh now within our design we do have this header okay so we have a header and then we have uh, this bunch of uh elements all right 
so what i'm going to do is we're going to just go in and build this out one at a time and uh, that that would kind of go in and make it so okay so what are the things that we're going to need within this all right so i'll just go in and open this uh, open my styles um, okay i'll keep it to the side because it kind of helps me out to dish out css pretty easily okay and i'm going to put this here so yeah, user groups, which is uh, which is inside of an it's inside of a development called as the list container. Let's just go in and uh, set it, give it some properties here. Uh, so for the time being, I'm just gonna say dot uh, list container. All right, and a container, container, container. There you go. And we're gonna import the styles as well because apparently. Let's just go in and get that as well. Import. Um, my styles dot CSS. So we built up a bunch of components already. Okay, but uh, I would say that uh, for the time being, uh, this is all in all good. Okay. Uh, one other thing I'll just go in and get done initially itself is gonna be the uh, the flex grow ratio, which is supposed to be the seventy thirty proportion that we are following. 30% for the sidebar, 70% for our other containers. Okay. All right, fine. Now, the next thing to go in and do here would be uh, basically just going in and uh, giving it a bunch of background color. Okay, so uh, for the list container, uh, we're going to follow the... Okay, so apparently I think there is no background color that is needed. So the flex is all we're going to go with for the time being. Okay. Now, uh, once this is done, uh, we can now just go in Okay, let's just add in some text over here, which is our uh, users underscore groups. Okay, so we're going to just put in some text here and let's just go in and within our main container on the side part over here, instead of the chat area, we are going to render out this particular uh, users underscore groups component. Okay, there you go. So uh, once that is done, uh, we will be ending up with a basic template as in such. I'm going to just give it some background color so that you can see it uh, for now. And now uh, if I just take it back, there we go. Oh, uh, the name of the class is different. Okay, there we go. Uh, so if I just take you back into the browser. So yeah, we, so we have this particular container, which will be going to the uh, right hand side. We just need to go and build up the uh, these particular components here. We need a header. I will suggest that we can go in and build um, a search bar as well so that we can search across all of these groups. So it's going to be kind of similar to how uh, the sidebar works, right? So I'll just utilize the same CSS that we had given in to the, uh, the same elements that we had given into the sidebar. Okay, so I'm going to just quickly go in and uh, get this coded out and uh we'll i'll just go in and explain you the approach through this okay there you go okay so this is kind of what we've ended up with uh so i managed to go in and create this online users slash i will groups component so we're going to be reusing this. We're just going to change the title and make it to available groups so that it can go and render out all the available groups. Uh, now, uh, talking about this, though, uh, the idea is like, um, it's fairly simple. So I just added in the search bar as well, because if there are multiple users who are currently online, right? So we kind of want to go in and filter that out as well. So I added in a search bar. Um, and then there are a bunch of items, as you can see over here. So all of these are certain uh, elements that I've created. So it's just one copy, which I've pasted multiple times. And as you can see, uh, if there are multiple uh, users who are currently online. All of them will go in and show up over here. And uh, we, I've also made it scrollable. But as you can see, I've removed out the scroll bar. Okay. So let me just quickly take you on through on how exactly did I manage to go in and do this. So uh, this is fairly simple to do here. I have the... Uh, I have this particular container that we have went in and we created just a second. Where is our user groups component? There we go. So this is the component that I had went in and created. So you have the header, uh, you have the search bar, and then you have the list. So I just copy pasted this list item uh, element a multiple bunch of times. So it's a div. It's a list item. And I've just went in and I've copy pasted it a bunch of times so that uh, I can show you how the scrolling would occur. 
right? Um, now, starting on with this, this was fairly easy to make. I just used a bunch of flex here and there and then uh, given it some box shadows and everything. Also, I've used pseudo selectors in order to go in and give or take care of states where the list item is being hold upon or the list item is being clicked, right? Uh, apart from that, one other thing you'd be able to notice is for the entire list container, right? So for this particular list container that we have over here, uh, which is inside of our, uh, okay, so just for the list apparently, yeah. So we only need for the list. So for the list, what I've done is I've used the pseudo class again, which is called the WebKit scroll bar. Uh, now this is something you're going to go in and require if you want to go in and remove the uh, scroll bar, but keep the functionality. You want the functionality, but you don't want to show the scroll bar. So you can just go in and use this particular pseudo selector, use WebKit scroll bar, and you'll be easily able to go in and get it removed out, but still keep the functionality of being able to scroll, right? Okay. Um, and that that's basically kind of it. Okay. So, uh, this is, I added in some transition duration as well. So that the color change from white to this a uh, bit more on the darker side goes in and happens over a span of 0.5 seconds. The click also kind of happens in that 0.5 seconds. Okay. And uh, so if I just take you back onto this, you can see we get that really cool effect. Like if when you go in and you hover on top of any element, right? And if I click on it as well, there is a small response. We'll keep the text content as non-selectable so that, you know, in case someone just goes in and clicks multiple times, I don't want the text to go in and get selected. So we'll add that in as well. So I'll say this kind of, uh, you know, brings us to this point where we have all the components that are required for our application to go in and work, right? We created the sign in the login page with the sign in page as well. Uh, we created the sign, the sidebar, we created the chart area, we created the uh, create groups component, um, you know, online users as we just created in just now. And uh, this, this kind of, you know, it, it has this, uh, you know, I'll say we kind of have reached a point where we have all the components ready for our uh, UI. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to give some routing altogether, right? So if I go in and click on these buttons, we want the uh, corresponding component to go in and load up onto the right hand side of the uh, sidebar. So the way we'll do this is by implementing routing and we'll be seeing this up in the next session. All right. So that would be all for this video. See you in the next one.